Hey guys, what's up? Today we're going to look at histograms and let's begin by stating some of the defining characteristics of a histogram. Number one is that frequency density always goes on the y-axis of a histogram. And we'll talk more about frequency density and how to calculate it in just a moment. And on the x-axis you're going to have a continuous variable uh, because histograms only represent continuous data. And so time or, or distance are common to see on the x-axis. The second characteristic is that the bar width corresponds to the class width. And what I mean by this is that the width of each bar is going to vary depending on the width of the class. For example, in this histogram, the first bar is more narrow than the second bar because the class that it's representing has a smaller range. Thirdly, the area of each bar is proportional to its frequency. So for example, a bar with an area of 24 squares might have a frequency of 48 and so you could use the fact that each square represents a frequency of 2 to work out the frequencies of the other bars. Alternatively, you might need to work out the frequency based on uh, the height and width of a bar in terms of centimetres. And this style of question is going to feature later on in this video. So back to frequency density, how is it calculated? Well, frequency density is equal to frequency over class width. So let's have a go at calculating some of the frequency densities in this example. A random sample of 200 students was asked how long it took them to complete their homework on the previous night. The time was recorded and summarised below. Draw a histogram to represent this data. So in order to draw a histogram, we need to know the frequency density because that's what we plot on the y-axis. So looking at the first column, the frequency is given as 55 and the class goes from 25 to 30, which means the class width is 30 minus 25. And so the frequency density is 55 divided by 30 minus 25. For the second column, the frequency is given as 39 and the class goes from 30 to 35. So again, the class width is 5 and so the frequency density is 39 over 35 minus 30. Similarly, in the third column, we have um, a frequency density of 68 divided by 40 minus 35. However, in the fourth column, the class, go the class goes from 40 to 50, which means the class width is now 10. And so the frequency density is 32 over 10. And for the last column, uh, the class width is, is yet larger again. So our class width now is 30 and our frequency is 6. So the frequency density is 6 over 30. So now that we have the frequency density for each group, we can go ahead and plot this histogram. So our first bar is grouped between 25 and 30, and its frequency density is 11. Our second bar between 30 and 35 has a frequency density of 7.8. Our third bar between 35 and 40 has a frequency of 13.6. Now next bar between 40 and 50 has a frequency density of 3.2. And finally, our last bar between 50 and 80 has a frequency density of 0.2. Also, if you're getting value out of this video, consider subscribing and hit that bell icon so you never miss a thing. 
So now we're going to have a look at other problems involving histograms. So in this question, the variable y was measured to the nearest whole number. 60 observations were taken and are recorded in the table below. What are the class boundaries for the 13 to 14 class? At first, this seems like a weird question, but notice how there are gaps between each group. There's a gap between 12 and 13, another gap between 14 and 15, and another one between 17 and 18. Therefore, because we're dealing with continuous data, we have to extend the class boundaries to the midpoint of each gap. And so the class boundaries for the 13 to 14 class are 12 and a half and 14 and a half. A histogram was drawn and the bar representing the 13 to 14 class has a width of 4 centimetres and a height of 6 centimetres. For the bar representing the 15 to 17 class, find the width and the height. In order to find the width, let's refer back to the second characteristic we mentioned about histograms. The bar width corresponds to the class width. The class width of the 13 to 14 class is 2 because we know the class boundaries are 12 and a half and 14 and a half, and the class width of the 15 to 17 class um, is 3 because we know that the class boundaries to that are 14 and a half to 17 and a half. And so the class width of the 15 to 17 class is 1 and a half times the class width of the 13 to 14 class, and so the bar width of the 15 to 17 class is 1 and a half times the bar width of the 4, 13 to 14 class. And so 1 and a half times 4 centimetres is 6 centimetres. In order to work out the height, let's refer to the third characteristic we mentioned about histograms. Area is proportional to frequency, or in other words, area equals some constant k times frequency. Let's use what we know about the 13 to 14 class to work out what k is. The area of the 13 to 14 class is 4 centimetres times 6 centimetres, so 24 centimetres squared is the area, and we know the frequency is 24. And so 24 equals k times 24, so k is equal to 1, and so the area is equal, in this case, to the frequency. Let's call the height of our bar h, and we know the width of the bar is 6, and so the area is 6h, and 6h is equal to the frequency, and we know, or we're told, that's 18. So 6h equals 18, and therefore the height is equal to 3 centimetres. Hey guys, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe and let me know in the comments what video you want to see next. But for now, take care, and I'll see you in the next video.